Maintaining a requirements spec while working from an agile backlog can be confusing. When do you update your requirements? At the beginning of the release feels too much like waterfall development and at the end creates a process bottleneck, right? Same question for tests. How soon or late should you write them? Well, the answer to both questions is just in time, or as they say in lean, at the latest responsible moment. Keep watching to see what that means and how to manage it in JIRA. For requirements management, just in time or latest responsible moment means updating requirements as part of the backlog item that is causing them to change. So in this example here, I'm implementing a new feature and all of and the user requirement and all the functional requirements are linked to this story and making these updates is considered part of the work of implementing this story. The same is true for test cases. Part of the work of implementing your story is also to create the verification tests that will verify that your story is done. And the only good exception to this rule is if you're doing something like test-driven development where you're actually writing this test even sooner, maybe prior to the start of the sprint. One key advantage to this strategy is that it really aligns with the agile mentality of embracing changing requirements. By waiting until the actual implementation work to update your requirements and your tests, you're ensuring that those updates are as accurate as possible. You're going to learn more about your requirements as you're implementing the feature. And if your requirements are open for editing while you're doing that work, it makes it very easy and inexpensive to make the necessary updates. Okay, so now we've done the work of implementing this feature and we've updated our requirement specification and ensured that our requirements match our implementation and made updates as necessary. And we've written our verification test and perhaps we've even dry ran this test to ensure that it is accurate as well. And now we are ready to lock all of these design inputs prior to formal verification. And to do that, we're going to submit all of these for approval. We can do this individually like I'm doing now, or we could do a bulk transition using Jira's bulk transitioning feature. Okay, so if we fast forward, we can see that our approval routes have completed. All of our design inputs are approved and this item is now ready for formal verification. Okay, and fast forward one more time and we can see that we have executed our test. We've linked the test evidence and it has been routed for approval and approved. And so that means that this entire backlog item is now ready to be submitted for approval. And what's nice about this strategy is now the reviewers of this backlog item can very quickly determine which requirement updates were made as part of this work, which tests were created as part of this work, and they can ensure that all expected updates were made. And in this way, you are able to maintain a very consistent design specification throughout development. So rather than checking for consistency at release time, you are maintaining consistency throughout development. A lot of people get confused by how do you know when they're all the requirements that were expected to be updated were made when you're ready to release, when you're working in an agile workflow, especially with parallel releases and all sorts of craziness. And here's the answer right here by verifying the necessary updates were made as part of each change, as part of each backlog item, you're able to maintain that very strong design consistency throughout. And now the very last step is at release time where you can do one final check against your requirement specification before you release. And you can make sure that everything is consistent, you didn't miss any approvals and etc. And this step is actually very easy because as we just described, you've maintained design consistency and specification consistency throughout. So all of these requirements should be approved because you verified that as part of your backlog items and all of the necessary updates should have been made because it, you verified that as part of your backlog items. And so at this point, all you need to do is one cursory check and then snapshot this requirement specification and approve it as part of your release. And that's it. We just saw how managing your requirements and tests in an agile workflow means updating them at the latest responsible moment or just in time. 
and oftentimes for requirements, that means as part of the work for each backlog item, and for tests, that means as part of the work for each backlog item, or just prior to the sprint if you're doing test-driven development. And the key advantages to this are number one, you maintain strong design consistency throughout development. And number two, you're detecting defects and issues as early as possible. And of course, that is always our goal. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you'd like to see more, go to www.agileinnovations.tech.